What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Hog Hoops Live, the sister show to Hog Sports Live, hosted by Curtis Wilkerson, who has just a strong basketball knowledge. He's our Razorback basketball and recruiting analyst. He's from Macquarie, Arkansas, so you know he knows the Hogs inside out. He's a former NAIA player, NAIA coach, and NAIA administrator, also formerly with Busting Brackets and with uh, Prep Hoops. So he's been with us for about half a year, does a fantastic job, and is going to do a great job on this podcast. So be sure to look out for Hog Hoops Live, streaming weekly on Facebook Live. You can also catch the show on YouTube and anywhere you get podcasts. Curtis, take it away, my friend. Good morning, everyone, and welcome into Hog Hoops Live, episode number two. I am your host, Curtis Wilkerson, basketball analyst here on the Hog Sports team alongside the infamous Trey Biddy and Danny West. Thanks again to Trey for the kind words and the introduction. We're super excited for this show. In today's episode, we got a lot to talk about. Your Arkansas Razorbacks are off to a 5-0 and start on the hardwood. We're going to dive into what's been a crazy week in terms of scheduling and the nightmare that... Uh, operations manager uh, Anthony Ruda has had to go through in terms of trying to find a game on the fly. We'll break down last night's win over Southern, preview this weekend's in-state matchup against UCA, all that and more coming up here soon on Hog Hoops Live. Okay, a couple things before we get started. Let's talk about how to watch. Very important stuff, right? Brand new show here on Hog Hoops Live. We're trying to get the word out there, spread the word. We're excited about it. We want people to be able to find us, be able to listen, be able to watch all of those things. So Facebook Live, that's what we're on right now. If you haven't subscribed to our page, make sure that you do that. YouTube, we've got the Hog Hoops Live page there, so make sure you hop on and subscribe. Podcast listeners, you can find us on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, all of those platforms, please subscribe, throw us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us that five-star rate and review. All those things help generate so much traffic for us and helps us spread the word. And that's something that we're really, really, really hoping to do here. Now, we're also running a promo at Hog Sports, right? You should already be a subscriber, okay? If you're not, you've been missing out, okay? But if you're one of those people that's kind of been on the fence, uh, I don't know what I'm going to get out of it. I, I don't know if I have the money. Well, you need to take advantage of this deal we're running right now and see if you can find out. Okay, You can get 60% off of an annual VIP membership. Now, that gives you access to a lot of things, Okay, all of our VIP content. So if you like what Danny West does, and I'm sure you do in terms of the amazing recruiting coverage and the tidbits that he gives uh, our subscribers, you can get access to all of that. All the in-depth analysis from Trey after the football games, okay? Those That's great reads, everything that I can bring to the table in terms of basketball recruiting and, and some deep dives that we do on opponents and things like that. Plus, gives you access to our Razor's Edge premium message boards, uh, which is a good time. It's it's a really a tight-knit community. We enjoy each other. It's worth the money. You can get all that right now for about, it breaks down to about 83 cents per week. You can't beat that. Okay? Go on hogsports.com. You'll find a link right there on the front page to the 60% off deal. Hop on that inside the story. It'll give you options to, to click and go through there and start your subscription. We'd really, really, really like to have you join us. Okay. Let me knock this stuff off of here and then let's talk about some basketball, shall we? First of all, big shout out to Moses Moody, right? Named SEC Freshman of the Week after a really strong pair of games last week uh, against UT Arlington and Lipscomb. You know, coming into those two games, Moody had done a nice job. I think he was averaging about 13 and a half points per game. Wasn't really shooting the ball that well just yet. Um, you know, probably, I don't know, in that 25 to 30 percent range from three. We know he's a better shooter than that, right? Well, he really turned it on last week. So in those two games, he averaged 21 and a half points, eight rebounds per game. His shot really started falling. He was doing a lot of things, still getting to the free throw line for the Razorbacks. Big part of those two victories. You know, and I just really appreciate the maturity uh, that Moses is approaching this game with. You know, every time we get a chance to talk to him, uh, he just seems like he's not a freshman. He he comes across as an upperclassman uh, with the way that he carries himself. And his teammates and Coach Musselman have applauded him just for his ability to listen, accept feedback, and then take 
the advice that he gets and put it to practice and then carry it over into a game. And it's something that you don't see oftentimes with young players like that. He's really done a nice job. So congratulations to him. I mean, it's a really nice honor, SEC Freshman of the Week, to get that in just your second week as a college basketball player. That's pretty impressive. You know, just thinking about those four freshmen, I mean, you've got Moses Moody, obviously, Jalen Williams, K.K. Robinson, and Devontae Davis, the in-state crew that everybody was so excited about. We talked about them last week on the show. Been some cool things happening in the last couple games against Lipscomb and then last night against Southern. All four of those guys got on the floor at the same time and got to play together. And sure, it was in, uh, if you want to call it garbage minutes or, you know, late in the game when things were under control, but that's pretty cool. And I, I know fans across the state really appreciate that uh, in terms of, hey, they're excited about having the force in-state freshmen. You want to see those guys play together. Hopefully it's a sign of things to come. I got a chance in the press conferences to ask Moses and Devo just what that moment was like. And you could just tell from the big smile that came across their face, you know, it's something that they're going to cherish. It was a special moment for them. So really nice that Musselman's been able to you know, get these games under control early get those guys some really valuable experience. They're all doing well. We'll talk about Debo's performance last night a little bit later, uh, but it, it's been very impressive, and it's cool to see all those guys get out there and play together on a team that has a lot of really talented veteran options. Okay. Let's see here. Let's talk about let's talk about this scheduling for a minute, okay? Uh, really a wild week. I mean, we were supposed to come on here uh, today or maybe even yesterday and, and really talk about Arkansas being tested for the first time this season. They were supposed to go on the road for their first road matchup against a Tulsa team that's, that's pretty good. Okay, that's a respectable program. They've hung tough with the likes of TCU and South Carolina early in the season. They beat UT Arlington uh, by a, a bigger margin than Arkansas did. So that was going to be a good test. Anytime you go on the road for the first time, you start to learn some things about your team. All right, well... We're going to have to wait a little bit. I guess again, due to a positive COVID test at Tulsa, as you all know by now, that game was canceled on Sunday, and then the madness began. And so immediately, those rumors started to swirl about Arkansas versus Little Rock, UALR, right? Uh, and, and really, the programs kind of did this themselves. You know, Obviously, the big social media brand that Musselman has developed, he, he immediately, as soon as they needed games, he hopped on social media and tweeted out, you know, to Anthony Ruda, who does the scheduling and said, Hey, somebody get this guy some West Rock coffee. He's going to be busy, right? We're, we're open for business Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we want somebody to come to Bud Walton Arena and play us, right? And then shortly after that, Little Rock wraps up their game with UCA and coach Daryl Walker over there in the press conference says, Hey, Musselman's going to get a text message from me. You know, we'll, we'll see if we can figure it out. So then all of a sudden, it's going nuts. Everybody wants to see that in-state matchup, right? So really, for the rest of the day, Sunday and into Monday, we were, we were kind of expecting that. As it turns out, there was a lot of smoke and not really any fire. And, and you know, as, as I understand it, uh, obviously, they talked about it, tried to see if they could work some things out. Um, didn't work out. You know, Little Rock has been going through a, a pretty tough stretch of games lately. Coach Walker felt like his team was ultimately fatigued and they, they would benefit more uh, from getting a little bit of extra rest. Doesn't mean they're not going to play each other in the future. Doesn't mean it changed the relationship between the two programs, but uh, it, it certainly caused, you know, a, a large amount of ruckus for, for really no reason there in the end. So then in turn to, well, who's Arkansas going to play? And during his radio show, on Sunday night, you know, Musselman mentioned, hey, I've heard from a few Power 5 schools. So, you know, it goes nuts on social media. Oh, you know, Iowa State, they have a game open. Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, you know, everybody thinks maybe they're going to pull in a big opponent there, something that's going to give you a, a marquee matchup and maybe help that strength the schedule a little bit. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, that just didn't work out. Okay? And, and you wound up with Southern. All right, and, and I know that's not an exciting matchup, and I'll even admit it was a little bit of a letdown because you wondered what they'd be able to come up with. But, uh, and, and I do have some firsthand experience on this, they just need to be happy to be playing a game at all when, when so many teams haven't been able to. I mean, Tennessee just played their first game of the season the other day. Ole Miss hasn't even played yet. For Arkansas to get through their first four uh, without any kind of complications so far this season when so many programs have, and then being able to schedule a midweek game on the fly like that, you got to be happy with it. I mean, I, I coached college basketball at the NAI level, small college level, 
at Lindenwood Belleville, and one of my main duties was putting together that schedule every year, and it is not as easy as it looks. It's, it's a headache. It's a nightmare at times just trying to figure out the logistics of travel and does this state work for somebody? Does the money work? Is, is the team willing to play? And then you add into all those things trying to do that and cross all the T's and dot all the I's in a matter of 24 or so hours and have the added factor of making sure that whoever your opponent's going to be can kind of fit into the COVID testing requirements to get things approved. I don't envy the job that Musselman and Anthony Ruta had. So, uh, you know, John Rothstein, college basketball an- an analyst that I follow on Twitter, uh, he's been, you know, tweeting every time one of these things have happened with, a, you know, games getting shuffled around, canceled and moved on the fly. And he said, basketball scheduling in 2020 is wilder than a goat rodeo. I agree. That is a fact. Okay. So you wind up with Southern again. We should all be thankful that Arkansas got the ability to play, you know, in, in fairness, we can be realistic here. The game didn't do a lot for Arkansas in terms of building a tournament resume, right? Uh, maybe didn't help them much in terms of preparing them for SEC play. Uh, you know, Oklahoma State, I think, on the road, and that's that's after SEC play begins, but in, in late January, that's going to be your biggest test uh, in the non-conference schedule, an opportunity for a nice out-of-league win, which is going to be very important for Arkansas. But Tulsa was the test before you head to Auburn to open SEC play. I mean, you can make the argument that Abilene Christian could, could bring some good competition. I mean, they, they nearly won at Texas Tech last night, uh, held them to 51 points. It was really impressive. You know, Oral Roberts isn't bad, but come on. I mean, first row game, Tulsa, respectable program from a good conference. Arkansas needed that game. Uh, now your resume, it takes a little bit of a hit. Okay, This wasn't the toughest strength of schedule for the non-conference slate anyway. It currently sets at 272. Uh, in the nation, according to Kim Palm. Now, that all balances out. Okay, If you look at some of these low major schools, I, I'm sure Mississippi Valley State has a you know, really high strength of schedule right now based on the teams they've been going around playing. Well, it all evens out. As Arkansas starts to play SEC games and those teams get into their league and, and they actually play lesser competition, those things will balance. But early on, you know, strength of schedule, 272 in the country, it's, it's not that impressive, right? Uh, but really the thing that, I think is a little bit alarming is now what are you going to learn about your team before SEC play begins? Hey, and, and, you know, I, Musselman, he, he can say whatever he wants. And uh, I, I'm just going to tell you right now, I guarantee you that he is not thrilled that the first time this team goes on the road is going to be their SEC opener. Now, Auburn's been down a little bit this year, but still, that's their head and shoulders above anyone Arkansas has played so far. Okay, You needed that Tulsa game to start learning about yourself. And you can say what you want about reduced crowd sizes and you know no home court advantage and things like that. And, and, and there's some truth to that this season, but there's a lot that goes in to team travel and the preparation on the road and the way you, you kind of approach game day. And that's not something you want to be doing for the first time in a big game of that magnitude. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see you know how that turns out. I, I will say, and I asked Musselman this on the press conference prior to the Southern game, you know maybe this could be something that big picture becomes a good thing for Arkansas, right? I mean, you, you take a look at uh, maybe tournament play, okay? where you're in a situation where you're not really sure who you're going to play, and then all of a sudden you find out real quick on the fly, and then your coaching staff has to put together a quick scouting report, you have one day of prep, you go play, boom. right? And, and you think about the way the NCAA tournament shapes up, maybe that happens where you play an opening round game on Thursday, and you have to turn around and do a follow-up on Saturday. right? And, and Musselman agreed that that was a good point, but he also said this is actually even more challenging because they had no idea at all who they were going to play until they came to the agreement with Southern, right? And so what that means is essentially in a tournament setting, at least you know, hey, we're going to play the winner of Team A and Team B, right? So he can assign one assistant coach to one team and one assistant coach to the other and kind of have those scouting reports ready. So it actually challenged the team a little bit more maybe. So it could be something that's good down the road. You know, we talked a little bit about strength of schedule, and and Musselman was asked this question too. You know, if, if he's concerned about that at this point in terms of you know putting together that tournament 
resume and and you know he made the point that strength of schedule is going to be really hard to determine with teams playing uneven numbers of games uh, we don't know how the SEC is going to shake out in terms of the opportunities that that league is going to provide uh, so so we'll see you know as I look at it here uh, I'm a little concerned about those opportunities that the SEC might provide just based on the way the league has been performing so far I mean let me let me pull up the standings here I mean you take a look Arkansas obviously setting at five and oh that's great I mean Ole Miss hasn't played yet you don't know what you're going to get out of them Florida's looked pretty good um, LSU supremely talented but then you look I mean Kentucky uh, what's going on there I, I mean they're off to a one and three start and and you know everyone knows that you know Coach Cal is going to have those guys roll in by you know January and getting into conference play they're always playing their best ball by the end of the year uh they tend to have a slip up in the early parts of the season. This has been a little alarming. You, you lose to Richmond at home. You know, obviously lost a, t- lost a tough one to Kansas, um, but then you know kind of got blown out by a Georgia Tech team that's lost to a couple low to mid majors. Uh, not looking too good for them right now, and it's going to take them a while to build that resume back up. And I think Alabama is a team that has a lot of potential with their ability to shoot the threes, but they're really streaky. Okay? When they're on, I mean, they look like a Final Four type team, but when those threes aren't falling, they look tough. And so that puts them in a position to where they're a team that can win a lot of games that maybe they shouldn't. They're also a team that could lose some games that probably they shouldn't. You know, Tennessee, that's the only team currently in the top 25 in the AP poll. They said at number 12, they just played their first game. Uh, looked decent against Colorado, but you know, you still don't know what you're going to get out of them. They're going to be going through, you know, kind of the same early season figuring each other out that the Razorbacks were a few weeks ago. They're going to be going through that now and leading into Christmas. So you'll wonder how sharp they're going to be early on. So it'll be interesting to see how everything turns out in, in terms of what this resume looks like. But it's a little too early to worry about it, right? We, we follow it because we're excited. We, we want to see the Razorbacks get back to the NCAA tournament. At the end of the day, all they can do is control what they can control, and they've done that. They're 5-0, and right? They got to that point last night by blowing Southern out. 79-44. Okay? to It was a game that was never in question really from the moment it was scheduled. Okay? Uh, might not have been a resume booster, and we've talked about that, but it was another game to really build chemistry, uh, and, and I think the Hogs did some good things there, right? Taking a look at this game, um, you know, six players in double figures. That that kind of gets you to, you know, we talked about at the end of the year about the potential balance that this team has. I mean, you think maybe a guy like Moses Moody is the, the one who could, you know, evolve and turn into that go-to guy down the stretch, but you got a number of options. I mean, you take a look at it, Justin Smith, 11 points, four rebounds. I mean, you want to talk about a high flying athlete. I mean, this, this guy, it's, it's it's shades of Michael Qualls in terms of some of the dunks that we saw last night. I mean, he was, if you're talking about, you know, posterizing guys and, and getting on sports center and things like that, he provided plenty of that last night. So uh, really the first glimpse, you know, for the, throughout a course of a game where we saw that athleticism really shine uh, Desi Sills added 11, you know, he hit three, three pointers, something that you like to see five assists, zero turnovers. So a really strong performance from Desi. Moses Moody, Mr. Consistent, right? He pitched in a dozen, five to 10 from the field, hit a couple threes, five rebounds, two assists, all over the stat sheet. You love to see it. Jalen Tate, he's been coming on as of late as a scorer. So pitched in a dozen in this one, hit a three-pointer. Okay, again, you don't need Jalen Tate to be a guy that shoots, you know, red hot 40% from three, but if he's good enough to make teams respect him and to come out and guard him and not use his man to help on other people. That opens things up for Arkansas so much. He hit a three, was five and nine from the field. He had a dozen points, four rebounds, two assists. Again, guys doing multiple things. J.D. Note comes off the bench, uh, gives you a dozen. Now, <laughs> Musselman pointed out that he took 11 shots in 15 minutes, so he's almost a shot per possession, shot per minute kind of guy. That's what you're going to get with JT Note, okay? The, the, the guy is going to come in and chuck it. And he wants to be the guy that comes in and provides instant offense. Now, the key is to make sure that those are good shots that you're taking. Okay, and, and really last night, I mean, again, he took 11 shots in 15 minutes. I don't think he took a ton of bad shots. Okay, He might have rushed a couple 
Hey, and, and taking a couple of those early in the shot clock where he could have kicked the ball around, maybe move it a little bit, make a cut or two, and get a better look. But, uh, you know, in past games we've seen him really, you know, try to break his man down off the dribble, uh, step back to get separation, and take some tough contested type shots. I honestly didn't see a lot of that, okay? He was getting some good looks in the corner. I mean, if he's got room to take the three, he's a guy that you want to shoot it. And then off the dribble, he's as good as it gets in terms of getting by his man and getting a look at the rim, okay? And he needs to play better defense, okay? but I, I'm going to remain bullish on J.D. Note that once Arkansas, once the competition starts to pick up and increase, and you need a guy to go get you a bucket in SEC play, I don't think you're going to find anyone better than him right now. Moses Moody could develop into that, but in terms of what Note can do, in terms of creating separation and space and getting by his man off the dribble, uh, I personally, in my opinion, I, I think he's the best that you have on the team right now. Devo Davis, wow. Okay, so you know you talk about another one of those freshmen that is kind of a little bit lower on the pecking order, maybe a little further down on the depth chart. In some of these games that Arkansas has been able to get under control, he's been able to get in there and mix it up a little bit. And he came in about midway through the first half, immediately steals an inbounds pass, and then and, and drops an assist to Note. A couple of possessions later, he has a nice pull-up jumper that he knocks down. He's all over the floor. He's getting his hands on everything, diving for loose balls, pulling down rebounds, deflections. Really, I thought had a good run in the first half. He was the 10th man to come in. Well, fast forward to the second half, and Devo's the first guy to come in off the bench. Okay, So Musselman took note of what he did in his first stint. And then he goes out there and really puts together an impressive performance, by far the best of his young career, finished with... 14 points on 5 of 8 shooting. He knocked down a deep 3 towards the end of the game uh, as the shot clock was winding down. Good to see Devo knocking down a 3. It looked good. Okay, uh, 7 rebounds, 2 assists. He played really well. He's a guy that's battling his way up the pecking order. Still a little bit behind in terms of you know the philosophies, learning the schemes, getting comfortable in the system. He actually played a lot at the 2 and the 3 on the wing Okay, when he's, he's naturally been a point guard but getting a little more comfortable operating off the ball uh, with the energy that he brings. If he can also bring it as a scorer, he could start passing some guys up. So really, really nice to see that from Devo Davis last night. He was excited about the performance. Uh, hopefully we get to see more of him in some upcoming games. You know, those are the six guys there that were in double figures. And you take a look at, you know, Connor Vanover, he plays 20 minutes. He hit one three pointer. He was, he was one of four from the field, one of three, from the three-point line, uh, so you're thinking, uh, you know, maybe not his best game, but the guy provides you with nine rebounds and four block shots, okay, and that's so valuable, and and especially when Arkansas is in that press again, and Musselman talked about it, where they have that shadow defender, usually Justin Smith, which means he's not guarding a man because he's looking for an opportunity to trap or jump a passing lane or something like that. That means Vanover's got two, so if things break down in that press. He's got to be there to protect the rim. He did that so well. Same situation, even if he wasn't blocking the shot, he was really able to, to kind of get in there and mix it up in terms of altering the shot and things like that. So I thought it was, I thought it was a good showing for him. Okay. And then Vance Jackson, the, the last guy I wanted to note on there. You know, with Vance, he finished with three points. He was one of four from the field. Uh, all four of his shots were threes. He had two rebounds. Arkansas has got to get more than that from Vance Jackson. Okay, this is this is not Gene Talsilla okay, in terms of bringing the grad transfer in and having high expectations and it not panning out. He's too talented for that, and and he's proven that over the course of his career. Uh, maybe battling some confidence issues and things like that right now. But if that three ball is not falling, he's a guy that can impact the game in more ways than just shooting three. He's six nine, two hundred and thirty pounds. Maybe he needs to mix it up on the glass a little bit more. I mean, he's been averaging nearly six a game over the course of his career. That could be a situation where he picks things up a little bit, uh, maybe works in the post a little bit, tries to get some easy baskets just to take the lid off and open things up some. So uh, got to get more out of Vance Jackson. He's one breakout game away, and I think, from getting that confidence back and helping. The thing with him has always been consistency, and that's what Arkansas is going to need out of him moving forward, no doubt. You know, the other thing in this game was, was defense, okay? You know, Southern, 
not the greatest team in the world, obviously. They were picked near the top of the SWAC. Uh, they have been challenged this year. I mean, they went on the road to take on Iowa, the number three team in the country. If anybody you know watched that game that, that they played and, and beat up on North Carolina a couple days ago, you know that Iowa was very good. And, and obviously they gave up a ton of points there. But Southern scored 76 on them. Okay, so this has been a team that's been able to score it so far this year in their first couple games. They were not able to score it last night. Arkansas held them to 44 points, 29% shooting from the field, and 1 of 13 from 3. Another complete performance. I mean, it's becoming a trend if you take a look at it. You know, Arkansas, the, the most points they've given up this year is 62, okay, and they held Lipscomb to 50. They held these guys at, at Southern, the Jaguars, to 44. Uh, you know, these are teams that you're supposed to beat. You're supposed to win these games comfortably, but they're doing it in dominant fashion. They're shutting these teams down defensively. Uh, coming into the game, Southern had a guy in Shivers, their their guard, who was averaging, I think, 16 and a half points per game. He had zero. And so they, they really did a nice job of shutting him down and taking him out of the game. And they've been doing well at eliminating the best player on the opposite team. And a lot of times that's Jalen Tate. Other guys get involved there, Desi, KK, uh, even Devo, uh, who I think is a very good on-ball defender. So really impressive stuff there. 5-0, uh, and oh, again, got to be happy with it. Let's see here. I want to take a look at just, you know, kind of where Arkansas stacks up nationally right now uh, in terms of, you know, some of the key metrics that you look at. Again, it's it's early, uh, but this just gives you an idea of, of where they're at, right? And so uh, Ken Palm, which is a great analytics site, they break down a lot of things. Right now, uh, they have Arkansas ranked number 35 overall in the country, so that's solidly in in terms of NCAA tournament consideration, which – when you're when you're playing a a soft non-conference schedule, you worry about how that's going to affect you. Well, according to some of these metrics, it, it's not affecting them right now. So what that tells me is when you get into SEC play and you're playing those better programs, you really have the opportunity to take a leap, and and so that's exciting to see. Uh, but number 35 overall in Kim Palm, you take a look at you know how they're doing offensively and defensively in terms of their efficiency. Uh, they're top 50 in the country in both of those categories. I think they're top 30 in defense, actually. Uh, so that's good to see. ESPN's BPI, which is their basketball power index. So uh, just you know, another one of those rankings formulas that they put together. That currently has Arkansas sitting at 31. So again, just outside the top 25, solidly in the field in terms of tournament consideration, right where you want to be right now. And they're doing it on the heels of, you know, a scoring defense that sets 20th nationally, a scoring offense over 92 points per game. We knew they could score it. And really, I, I didn't think they were particularly good last night. Offensively, they still came away with 79 points, but they're averaging over 92 per game. And then get this, okay, rebound margin. Arkansas sets at number 12 in the country. Did, you know, if you if you thought that you would ever hear somebody say that about an Arkansas basketball team, you know, throw a thumbs up in the comments, but uh, really <laughs> incredible to see. Obviously, that's going to start to balance out a little bit as we uh, as we move forward into SEC play and, and, and get some, you know, bigger and more athletic competition, but it's a great start. They weren't doing that last year in the non-conference schedule, so good to see. You know, obviously, there's a lot of things that they need to work on, okay? and, and that's why these games are important. So I think you have three games left before you get into SEC play. Uh, you know, I don't want to steal too much of my own thunder here because as, as we have one of these extended breaks in the next week or two, I, I really want to break down where this team is at and, and take a deeper dive. But, you know, a couple things off the top of my head that need to be a focus or a point of emphasis moving forward. Um, I, I do think toughness and finishing around the rim a little bit more. It's something that Musselman's mentioned. It was a lot better against Lipscomb. You kind of saw it backtrack a little bit last night against Southern in terms of missing some of those easy ones around the rim. Uh, maybe getting getting bullied a little bit or, or letting the contact alter the shot. Uh, so obviously something they'll continue to work on. Free throws. Um, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and, and say that they were a little bit concerned about what that might look like. It's been decent. I think they've been around 75% throughout the course of the year, and you like to see that. Uh, I think 8 of 17 last night. That's not good, Okay. Um, in a tight game, obviously, you need to be knocking those down to give yourself separation. Every point matters. It didn't last night, but it could in the future. And you take a look at it, and really, in terms of career statistics, you have a lot of guys 
who were really in that, you know, 60, 65% to low 70% range. Um, so who's the guy that you're really going to rely on? If there's a technical foul, who do you want at the foul line? Down the stretch of the game, when you know that the opponent's going to be fouling you to try to, to try to get you on the free throw line and get the ball back, who do you want the ball to be in his hands knowing he can go up there and knock down two? I think right now it's it's probably clearly Moses Moody outside of that. Um, well, they'll have to find out some better options there, right? Need to get Vance Jackson and, and Nate and J.D. Note going consistently. Again, I, I do think the bench can be a huge strength for this team in terms of what they can bring to the table uh, in terms of scoring punch. The, the starting lineup, the group of – uh, Jalen Tate, Desi Sills, Moses Moody, Justin Smith, and Vanover, uh, they've done a great job of starting games and starting the second half and going on runs and getting things under control. And when the bench comes in, uh, there's a little bit of a drop-off. And, and they haven't been terrible, but they haven't been extending leads. And Coach Musselman talked about the plus-minus ratios uh, of these certain guys that come in. And you want to be able to, to keep pouring it on and keep adding it on and this is the type of bench that should have the firepower to be able to do that. They just got to bring it consistently. And then, you know, the big thing with those guys, especially if you think about, you know, Vance and, and J.D. Note, who can come in and score it in bunches, well, they also need to play defense, right? And, you know, I, I have seen some signs, I think, from Note doing a better job of keeping his man in front of him off the bounce, uh, but he still gets a little bit... Uh, maybe loses awareness at times and, and kind of gets beat on cuts and things like that or uh, not communicating through screens. So those are the things that he needs to continue to work on there. Uh, and that'll improve as the season goes along. And then, you know, with, with Vance Jackson, I think just being a little bit more physical around the rim and, and getting on the boards a little more will certainly help the team. Moving forward, okay, the next game, we, we spent some time talking about the excitement around the possibility of an in-state matchup between Arkansas and Little Rock. Well, we're going to get one in-state matchup between Arkansas and UCA. So Central Arkansas coming in on Saturday, 7 p.m. It, it's really the back end of a, a nice doubleheader on campus. Football's got Alabama early. You can leave that game, go grab some dinner, come back to Bud Walton, check out the in-state matchup between the Hogs and the Bears. So, you know, a win there would put Arkansas at 6-0. and can't complain with that start. Hopefully they get it done. Uh, this is a game that, that really shouldn't be in doubt, you wouldn't think. UCA is not bad, okay? Let me let me make that very clear, okay? They're definitely not the worst team that Arkansas has played. Don't get me wrong. Arkansas should win. They should win going away, okay? But UCA is not the worst team that Arkansas has played. Okay? Looking at their schedule here, uh, they played Memphis. You know, they wound, up, they wound up losing by, you know, 15 to 20 points there. But they played Memphis really tough into the second half, and, and we know Memphis is a very talented team. Um, obviously still working on some things, but they're good. Okay? Uh, so that's, uh, that's definitely something that caught my eye. Uh, they played Little Rock over the weekend to a three-point game. We know how talented that Little Rock team is, and they gave them everything that they wanted. And then their most recent game, they, they kind of took it on the chin a little bit against St. Louis. Uh, lost 88 to 65 in that game, but hey, St. Louis, I mean, that, that's where I live for the past, you know, decade or more. Uh, they've got a hell of a team this year. That, that's a group that beat LSU um, already earlier in the season. And, uh, you know, nothing to hang your head about there if you're, if you're UCA. Uh, you know, the Bears do have two players that I think are really, really good. Just, you know, in the, in the clips of film that I've been able to watch, uh, Ryland Bergerson, he's a six, six wing. He leads them in scoring. Uh, I think about 17, 18 points per game. He transferred in from BYU, okay, which we know is a good basketball program. He's done a really nice job for them, and I'm anxious to see. He's kind of the first sizable wing that can really shoot it and create uh, in terms of teams that Arkansas has faced. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with him. Uh, DeAndre Jones, another guy to keep an eye on. Little guy, I think he's about 5'9", 5'10", one of those really speedy point guards uh, that can kind of test some of these guards for Arkansas in terms of uh, their perimeter defense and lateral movement. So a couple nice players there. They're a pretty balanced team beyond that. So it'll be a, an interesting game to watch. You know, I, I, I think they're a team that's shooting it well from three. I mean, they're about 39% as a team so far for the season. That's good. They've hit a good amount of threes as well. They're rebounding it well. I, I think their coach, Anthony Boone, is really doing a nice job, uh, especially given the situation that he inherited. 
Uh, you know, defense, though, has been an issue for them. Right? They're, they're giving up 86 points per game so far. We know Arkansas likes to score it. Uh, so we'll see how that, play, how that plays out on Saturday. I want to talk a little bit of recruiting with you here. Uh, nothing major, just some just some news and, and updates and tidbits. I did get a chance to check out some film, uh, some recent film from the early games from Arkansas's lone class of 2022 commit, Joseph Pinion. Uh, really good wing out of Moralton, four-star guy just outside of the top 100. Uh, he looks really good. Okay, I love his frame at 6'6". He's really starting to fill out, broadening the shoulders, uh, shooting it very well. That's always been his thing, you know, whether it's, uh, a catch and shoot opportunity, running off of screens, pulling up off the dribble. He's been a guy that can really create and knock down that three point shot. He's got a consistent rhythm, really smooth release that looks really good. Um, he does look a little bit more aggressive and explosive attacking the basket, which is something that, that's going to be a good addition to him. Uh, he's going to be a nice addition in a couple years, still has room to grow into his frame. It's going to be a nice pickup for Arkansas down the road. Uh, and then Darian Ford, another guy in that 2022 class, again, a really talented in-state group. Uh, Darian out of Magnolia, 6'3", 6'4", combo guard. Uh, he got his season underway last week. They got a little bit of a late start. I think their first game was on the fourth, I believe it was. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure he made Sports Center top 10 for just a, a ridiculous dunk uh, over the top of a defender. I, I saw the clips over it, and I... I shot him a shot him a text and you know asked him why he had to why he had to do that to the poor guy and he said hey you know I, my dad told me I need to be more aggressive going to the rim and, and the guy got in my way so uh, but it just goes to show you the the impressive athleticism that he has he you know his jump shot something that he's working on and it's looking better but in terms of just his athleticism and just his strength and, and physical build for you know a 16 17 year old kid. Uh, you don't find that in too many people, and I think Arkansas is in a pretty good position there with Darian. Muss is back in the transfer portal. Shocker, okay? Uh, nobody's surprised to hear that, uh, but a 2021 transfer that I think you should keep an eye on, Parker Stewart, okay? Parker Stewart, 6'4 combo guard out of Tennessee Martin. Uh, really just an incredibly sad story. Uh, Parker's father was, was the head coach at UT Martin, passed away tragically, uh, during the preseason. I can't imagine what that's like to deal with. Um, you know, so, so hearts out to him. He's made the decision to transfer and, and kind of get a fresh start. Uh, but an extremely, extremely talented player. This is a guy who started his career at Pitt, uh, averaged nine points per game as a true freshman for Pitt and knocked down 71 three pointers. So, you know, six, four guard who can shoot it. You like to see that transferred to play for his dad. And at UT Martin last year, he upped his scoring to 19 points per game and knocked down another 71 threes. So this is a guy, you know, I think that could really be a, a plug and play type in a lot of power five programs. Uh, obviously had a long list of suitors. Arkansas stood out there as, as being, you know, a team that made the cut to the final four. He's going to be choosing between the Razorbacks, um, Indiana, Kansas State, and Memphis. Yeah, Memphis, Kansas State, Indiana, Arkansas. That's the four. Um, so we'll see what he chooses to do there. Uh, there are some strong connections with a couple of those other programs, but you know uh, you know the, the reputation that Musselman has developed in that transfer portal, so you can never count them out there. Definitely one, I think, to keep an eye on. Okay. Take a look here. See if we can find any of your questions um, not necessarily seeing them pop up here today and we've had some trouble with that in the past okay all right not seeing those sorry about that folks we'll, we'll try again next week work out some of the kinks there in terms of that but at any rate okay so before we let you go I uh, do want to remind you again of all the ways to watch and listen let me pull up my my NASCAR thing here that that Trey likes to call out okay we really do appreciate your sport again if you're listening right now you're on our Facebook live page hogsports.com okay this hog hoops live show 
This is the sister show uh, to Hog Sports Live, right? So uh, shows up on the same page. Make sure you subscribe. You probably already are, okay, because of the great job that Trey does uh, with Hog Sports Live. YouTube, we have a separate page for that. Okay, so Hog Hoops Live, separate page. Make sure you hop on there and subscribe. These videos will be posted there uh, shortly after we wrap things up here. And then again, if you're a podcast listener and you don't want to look at this beautiful face and you just want to listen to the beautiful voice, that's fine too, right? Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Make sure you hop on again, like, rate, and review. We really appreciate that. It helps the algorithm, a young show that we want to help kind of branch out and get things going a little bit. And remember, if you're not a subscriber to hogsports.com, hop on, take a look at our 60% off promo and get you access to a ton of things that you're going to want to be a part of. You know, we're getting close to national signing day. I can't imagine the stuff that Danny West has planned for that, you know, following this exciting Arkansas basketball program. And then, Hey, the Arkansas football program is turning things around to well. So, you know, it's definitely something that you want to be a part of. You want some insider information. You want to be a part of a great community. Hop on and join us now at hogsports.com. The good news for you guys is you're going to get a little bit of a double dip today. It is Thursday. Okay, so we hopped on. Usually we'll hop on and do this show the day after the midweek game so we can kind of review that, uh, recap how things went, and then preview the weekend's games for basketball. Uh, it's also Thursday, which means Hog Sports Live with Trey Biddy. Arkansas football has a huge game this weekend against number one Alabama. It's a great opportunity to round out the regular season. Trey's going to be on here shortly. He usually starts that around 11, 11.30. So go grab yourself a snack. Stay tuned for that. Hop back and join us when Trey gets on here later. I might be joining him as a guest. I usually do uh, on Thursdays, so we'll see about that. All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for us. That'll wrap us up for the day. Uh, on behalf of Hog Sports, this has been your host, Curtis Wilkerson. Really appreciate you joining in today. We'll see you sometime next week on Hog Hoops Live. Hope you all have a great day and a great weekend.